Hey guys and welcome back to another Raspberry Pi tutorial. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about the Raspberry Pi camera module V2. Now what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys first of all how to hook this up to our Raspberry Pi. Just This will just take a minute or two just to make sure we get this in correctly. And then I'm going to be showing you guys how we can take photos with this and record video. Now in the next video I'm going to be showing you how we can actually stream live video from this using sockets and some cool Python code. But for now on we're just going to start with the basics so photo and video. Now once you guys unpackage this you should see that you get your Raspberry Pi camera in a package that looks like this. Now I'm just going to take it out here, I've already actually used this but I'm just storing it in there for now and you can see that my cable is slightly bent but that's alright. Now this is a pretty small camera but I believe it's something like 8 megapixels and it actually takes decent photo and video. Now we're going to be going through all the settings today but the first thing we need to do is just plug it into this Raspberry Pi. Now you want to be careful with this because it is fairly fragile and what we're going to want to do is actually plug it into this slot right here. Now to open this up, what we're going to do, I'm just using a screwdriver here, is lift up the kind of the edges of this plastic here, just being fairly gentle. And you should see that this is actually lifted slightly just a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this end here, so where you can actually see the prongs, and we're going to plug them in so the blue is facing the back or the USB ports of the Raspberry Pi. Now once that's in there, you're going to make sure that's in nice and tight. Uh, it's hard to kind of show this on video while I'm doing it. And then you're going to press down on this black piece here until you hear it clicks. Now since mine's in the case, it's a little bit more difficult. And I usually just use the screwdriver to make sure that I'm actually getting it completely down. So there we go. Mine is in now. And now that you have this plugged in correctly, we're going to go ahead, actually get on our Raspberry Pi and start using this camera. All right, so now let's start actually setting up the camera on our Raspberry Pi and taking some photo and video. Now I will warn you guys right now, if you're not plugged in directly to your display, so you're doing something like VNCing into your Raspberry Pi, which is what I'm actually doing right now, which essentially means I'm just remote accessing my Raspberry Pi, that's how I'm able to actually screen record here, you're not going to be able to see the live feed of your camera. What actually happens is when you do the live feed, your Raspberry Pi your Raspberry Pi tries to spit that out to the actual display that's plugged into it. So if you're VNC'd uh, into it like I am right now, like virtual network something, whatever that means, uh, then you're not going to be able to see the display. So just make sure that you guys are actually plugged in, like your keyboard and mouse is plugged in and you have a display plugged into this Raspberry Pi. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult to see and actually test if this is working. So what I'm going to do right now is just show you how to set up the camera. So the first thing we want to, we want to do is actually just type raspi hyphen config. And I believe before that we might have typed sudo. Now, when we do that, it should bring up something that looks like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to interfacing options. I just use the number or the arrow keys to do that. Hit enter. And we're going to go to camera. Now, this should be showing up. If this is not showing up, this means that you actually haven't plugged in the camera correctly. Now, after we do that, we're going to click enter and we're going to click yes to enable the camera. Now mine's already enabled, so I don't have to do anything past this, but you guys will likely have to restart your Raspberry Pi or go for a reboot. So I'm just gonna hit finish here, and that's all we need to do to actually set up the camera. And now what we can do is actually start working with it and um, recording some video and taking photos. So I'm gonna close this, and what I'm gonna do now is go to IDLE. So if I can find that under programming, I'm going to go to file new once this eventually loads up. And I'm just going to start, first of all, taking photos and then taking videos. So new file. And what I'm going to do is start by importing Pi camera and importing the time module. And then I'll show you how to take cameras or take photos. So we're going to say from Pi camera, import Pi camera, just capitalizing that P and the C there. And now what we're going to do is import time. So we're going to say import time like that. Now we're going to define our camera. So I'm going to say camera equals pi camera, camera like that. And now we can actually start using the camera. Now, whenever you use the pi camera, what you actually need to do is you need to let it kind of warm up before you start taking a photo or video. So what we're going to do every time we start using this is we're going to type camera dot start uh, underscore preview like this. And then we're going to sleep for two seconds. So we're going to do time dot sleep two. 
Now this is the minimum amount of time that you can wait before you start taking photos with the camera. Now some of you will probably try to do this without sleeping and it may work for you, but to make sure that you're not going to run into any issues, always do this and just make sure that you're sleeping two seconds after you start the preview. Now starting this preview will actually display the camera onto the screen for you. Now you're only going to see this again if you're plugged directly into the display because it just takes over the entire display to show the camera. So on my screen, we're not going to see the live display of the camera, but if you guys are plugged in, you will be able to see this. I just need to make that clear. So I'm going to save this now and I'm just going to save this as let's say camera um, dot pi and we'll save this onto my desktop. Now it's important, actually I already named one of these cameras, so I'm just going to say uh, tutorial maybe dot pi. It's important that you don't name this file pi camera. If you do that, you're going to run into a bunch of issues because then this import here is not going to work properly. All right, so now if we want to take a photo, what we can do is just simply type camera dot capture like this. And then we can simply type the name of the file we want to save this to and it will it will just save it wherever our directory is or wherever our script is running. So in this case, I'm on my desktop, so it's going to save it on the desktop as well. So I'm just going to save this as test.jpg, the standard file format. Uh, and now if I run this, we should actually see that it saves that file and I will be able to open up the image for you guys. Um, but again, if you're going to be viewing this image, sometimes it may only work if you're actually directly plugged in to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to run this with F5 wait our two seconds it's gonna snap a photo i'm just looking at the camera now hopefully this photo turned out good for you guys and now we should see on our desktop we have an image called test.jpg you should be able to open this by just double clicking let's see what we get for our photo and this one is a bit blurry because i was moving the camera but you guys can see that we get this photo now it actually saved in the resolution 1920 by 1080 so i can blow this up um, and you can see the beautiful photo of me nice and blurry while i move the camera but that's it for taking photos now, if you want to change the resolution or you want to flip your camera around, I'm going to show you how to do that quickly. So the first thing that we can do is we can set our camera resolution. Now, the maximum camera resolution for this, I believe, is something like 2560 by 1440 or something like that. I don't know the exact resolution, but I'm just going to go ahead and set mine to 640 um, by 480 for right now. Just setting it at a low resolution because we're going to start doing some video in just a second. Now, if I want to flip my camera vertically, so say I noticed when I took my photo, it was upside down. To do that, we just type V flip, uh, so F L I P equals true. And this is just going to vertically flip our camera. So now let's go ahead and do this again. So F5, I'll look at my camera right this time and give it a nice little wave big smile. And then now if we run this and we look at test.jpg, you can see a beautiful photo of me flipped correctly and a smaller resolution this time of 640 by 480. All right. So that's it for taking photos. Pretty straightforward. You can obviously put this into a while loop and take a bunch of photos or wait for some kind of motion and then take a photo. Um, you guys can play with that, but now I'm going to show you how to take video. So to take video is very similar, except all we're going to do to do this is do camera dot start underscore recording. So start underscore recording like that. Now in, inside of here, we're going to put a file name again, but the encoding on this has to be dot H264. Now this is a raw video recording, which means that to open this is kind of a bit finicky, but I'll show you guys that in just a second. So I'm going to record this under my underscore movie dot H264. And then all I'm going to do is simply sleep for as long as I want to wait for this recording. So if I want to record for 10 seconds, I'll sleep for 10 seconds. If I want to record for five seconds, I'll do it for five. And then once we're done, we're going to do camera dot stop underscore recording like that. And that'll stop recording our camera. Now that's actually it to saving this um, and recording a file essentially or recording a video. Now the only thing is to view this video is a little bit finicky and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So let's run this first of all and let's see if this is actually working. Again, my camera is down here so that's why it's kind of like coming up like this. So we'll wait that five seconds and get our movie recording and then I'll show you guys how we can actually view this. All right, so now it's finished recording and if we want to view this, uh, what we can do is actually use something called OMX player that should come with your Raspberry Pi. So if you want to see if this first of all is on your Raspberry Pi, what we're going to do is just type OMX player 
like this. And then if it gives you no errors, you have OMX player and you're ready to move on. Otherwise, you're going to have to install it. And I can't tell you how to do that because I don't know. So you're going to have to look that up. So what I'm going to do next is just CD onto my desktop so that I can actually play this video. So I'm going to say OMX player. And then I'm just going to simply going to type my underscore movie dot H264 and hit enter. Now, when you do this, you should see the video pop up on your screen and you should be viewing it at about 25 FPS. Now, for me, obviously, since I'm VNC'd into this and I'm not actually in the display, I don't have an HDMI cable plugged into my Raspberry Pi. You can see it's just the camera and the power cable. I can't view it, but for you guys, you should be able to. So that is actually it for recording and taking video. If you want to change the resolution, just change this. If you want to change the vertical flip, you can do that. You can also do a horizontal flip. So camera.h flip, I believe is that one and set that equal to true or false accordingly. And it, that is how easy it is to record to video and to take photos with your Raspberry Pi camera. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how we can actually stream this to a live feed so that we can view this from any other computer. And that's going to be kind of cool. It's going to be a bit of a longer video, but we're going to be using sockets um, and that'll be an interesting video as well. So with that being said, uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again.